fall of a prophet. After a quick rest in one of the barracks rooms, you decide to head towards where the Jinn is labouring in the complex. He does little to react to your presence, but continuing to repair part of a wall that has formed a crack. You decide to talk to him and he engages you in conversation, stating that his name is ah -Tayir. He lets you know that he was commanded to look after the maintenance of this area by Torhild Flametongue himself, at the height of Besselmir's power over 5,000 years ago. The King of the Dwarves possessed a horn that could summon the Jinn, and he was obligated to conduct the task. He has resented his duty, but cannot escape it. Atayir lets you know that the horn rests in the Steppe Pyramid behind the throne of the Prophet Arisi, who resides there, and that it can be blown only once every 100 years to assign him to a task. Unfortunately, Arisi has not seen fit to alter Atayir's task, or even free him from it. He suggests that if your quest is to kill Arisi, to be quick to destroy the horn, so that he may be freed from any instruction to have to kill you. You take the opportunity to speak further with Ah Tayir to understand what he might know, given the length of time he has occupied these halls. He lets you know that the presence of the elemental evil in the Deserin Valley goes back thousands of years, when a sect of renegade drow discovered the extensive caverns beneath the Sumber Hills and claimed it as their territory. These dark elves venerated a terrible god of primordial evil, and they built a shrine to this nameless power. In time, the ancient drow cult faded away, and the place that was known as the Temple of the Elemental Eye was forgotten for centuries. The dwarves of Besselmere were the next folk to discover the site. Besselmere was a realm of pastures and cropland, the dwarves established an underground stronghold called Tyre Bessel beneath the Sumber Hills to defend against the trolls and giants that plagued the region, which is where you currently stand. The dwarves discovered the ancient drow hold and its temple below their own delvings. However, they lacked the will to clean out the ruins, so abandoned their deeper excavations. Persistent attacks by trolls and giants soon broke the realm of Besselmere and the remaining dwarves of the line of flame tongue abandoned the place altogether. Over the years, adventurers occasionally stumbled across the buried stronghold of Tyre Bessel and the drow vaults below it. Few made any lasting record of their explorations, and their names are forgotten. But a time came when a band of adventurers called the Knights of the Silver Horn found and commenced an exploration of the ruins. The adventurers came back to Tyre Bessel again and again, and when they decided to establish strongholds and tame the territory, they raised their keeps over each of the known access points leading to the ancient Dwarven ruins. The adventurers feared something in the deep caves below the Sumber Hills, and they intended to set a permanent watch over the area. Fortune didn't cooperate. A generation or two after the Knights of the Silver Horn established their strongholds, an orc horde swept through the north and the keeps were overrun. For centuries they stood empty. Locals came to know them as the haunted keeps, and various monsters occasionally occupied the ruins. The abandoned keeps and the dwarven stronghold beneath them might have been forgotten forever, but a few years ago a drow named Vizaran de Vere returned to the ancient Fane of the Eye. A renegade drow wizard of great power, de Vere was no servant of Lolth. Like the forgotten sect that created the temple long ago, he devoted himself to the nameless power of the Elder Elemental Eye. His faithfulness to this dark power did not go unrewarded. Guided by visions, Vizaran de Vere created four mighty weapons imbued with elemental evil. The spear Windbane, the dagger Tinderstrike, the trident Drown, and the war pick Iron Fang. He left these weapons on the altar of the Elder Elemental Eye for their fated bearers to discover. Within the last year, each of the four elemental prophets sought out the ancient altar 
presumably enticed by dreams or visions. One by one, they claimed their weapons and became the leaders of their respective cults. The four prophets established themselves in the ruins of Dwarven Tyre Basil and occupied the haunted keeps that guard access to the vast complex. Lunatics, outlaws, power-hungry villains and monsters of all descriptions began to trickle into the valley, drawn by the dark call of elemental evil. Meanwhile, the prophets experimented with their new toys, nurturing the seeds of elemental nodes that grew larger every day and testing their powers to create ever larger natural disasters. After thousands of years, the seeds of elemental evil once again sprout beneath the Sumber Hills. And once again, a band of adventurers has come forth to combat that evil. You listen to Ah Tayye finish his tale, trying to perceive the scale of a threat that has lasted millennia. You push the vastness of history to the backs of your minds and think that you can only deal with what's in front of you, one problem at a time. You thank Ahtaye and he goes back to work, but you gather to plot how you might assault Arisi's position in the Step Pyramid and prevent her from summoning the powerful Jinn to defend her. Your planning ends with your assault on the Pyramid. Splitting your forces, you enter through both the western and eastern double doors at the same time and find yourselves confronting several air cultists. However, you react with lightning speed and neutralize their threat quickly before finding yourselves between two stone staircases rising to the upper chamber. You are deciding your next step when you are attacked by an enemy that is invisible, landing blows on Healthy and Mueza before you are able to react. Not knowing how many invisible enemies there might be in the room, you decide to attack the spaces from where the blows came from, with little effect. More blows rain down on you and you think you might be in trouble. Despite this, you decide to advance up the stairs to confront Arisi, the Prophet of Air, leaving Mueza behind to try to deal with the unseen foe. Leilun enters the upper chamber first, locates Arisi seated on her throne and unleashes a sickening radiance spell on her, filling most of the room with its effect. Healthy decides to be brave and risks a dimension door to get close to where the horn might be so that Ahtaye may not be summoned. But with her vision obscured by a number of silk curtains in the room, she materializes right in front of Arisi herself, surprising both of them. Jadago limits his options to ranged attacks due to not wanting to enter the effect of Leilun's spell, but receives the full force of a chain lightning spell intended to also hit Leilun and break her concentration. Leilun dodges the worst of the damage and manages to keep the sickening radiance going. Due to Leilun's resilience, weak cultists begin expiring at an alarming rate. Although Arisi is proving to be a difficult foe, she has no means to dispel the radiance. Therefore, she leaps towards where the horn is and seems intent on blowing it. Incensed, Healthy leaps after her and unleashes the full force of her fury against which Arisi has no answer. As Healthy's flaming sword passes through the Prophet, her material body disperses in a puff of smoke. However, the battle is far from over. Mueza has fled upstairs from the unseen foe, but it has continued to give chase. Suddenly, the tabaxi takes a grievous blow that floors the feline. Quirky is on hand to revive him as he directs Nebulon's healing energy towards the Beastmaster. But as soon as the tabaxi is on his feet, he is floored again, and this time things do not look good for the Whiskered Whimsy. After Arisi's fall, you are all able to close in on the area surrounding Mueza and seek the invisible foe and fail to find it again and again. It is only after a while of seeking that you realize it hasn't attacked anyone recently and must have fled. You keep your heckles up for a while before deciding that it definitely has, given that it hasn't got any more to fight for. And then you are able to relax and explore the room. The 20 foot high chamber contains a map 
of an ancient dwarven realm meticulously etched into the flagstone floor. At the far end of the chamber, a high throne atop a marble dais overlooks all. Peaked arcades hung with gossamer sky blue curtains run the length of the chamber on either side, behind which were the cultists who perished so quickly. Behind the throne, a great spiraling horn rests in an alcove. Healthy blows on this and commands the jinn to be free and is granted a boon from Ahtayir for doing so. She then cleaves the horn in two so that it may never be used again. Examining the remains of Arisi, which is comprised only of what she was wearing and carrying, you find treasure of great monetary value. Of most interest though is her weapon, the spear called Windbane. Leilun uses a precious pearl to identify the item's properties and learn of its many qualities and also the cost in wielding such a weapon. You discuss what you might do with it as you gather for a much needed rest. The cult of howling hatred is no more and you are a step closer towards foiling the plans of the Elder Elemental Eye. Thank you for listening to the progress of my Dungeons and Dragons group as they make their way through the Princes of the Apocalypse campaign setting. Watch out for further episodes where we shall learn about the party's final explorations of the Air Temple before their incursion on the Cult of the Crushing Wave.